We do have, as we normally do on a Monday at this time, is uh, the editor-in-chief of the Rockland County Business Journal getting a notification on her computer. It is Tina Traster. Good morning, Tina. How are you this morning? Good morning. How is everybody? Has everybody uh, uh, um, battened down with this wind? It's, uh, it's I know. I, I'm I'm staying inside as much as possible. I don't want to get blown away. I'm I'm kind of worried about this. I was hearing it last night, too. It was shaking everything. All right. Well, let's see if I can blow everybody away with some news. Okay. <laughs> the wind um, should help. Um, okay. So a couple of things uh, to, to throw out there. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, NIAC and um, kind of a, a juncture that the, the village finds itself at, perhaps. Um, you know, every place uh, has to, I guess, embrace what some consider progress or what others uh, consider um, uh, to be problematic, and and that's up to interpretation. What we're talking about today specifically is um, should, can, will NIAC continue to build housing um, as it has been doing? Uh, In the last couple of years, it's added 140 units. Uh, To some, that seems reasonable, not even that many. To others, that seems too many. And so this is an existential question in NIAC, but probably in, in every or any community. I, I think it, it, it becomes particularly germane in a village where um, a village has been a certain way for a long time. And, um, you know, it, it's also very obvious when there's kind of a spate of, of new housing because a village is walkable and tight. It's not so much like um, a suburban area, Uh, or another subdivision where you don't necessarily see it. Um, This is is seen, it's visible, it's on the street. So what this is about is over the last few years, there have been uh, three or four multifamily um, housing projects that have gone up um, pretty much at the upper end of Main Street, where if there's any place that needs um, revitalization in NIAC, it, it is that stretch. That stretch is typically and continues to have dilapidated, uh, falling down, uh, kind of fallow buildings, and they have been replaced like, uh, recently with um, rental apartments. Um, now, these kinds of apartments are, and we've talked about this many, many times, are slated for millennials and uh, empty nesters. You know, they're, they're one- and two-bedroom apartments. And in one case, um, in one particular building, the project is, is all affordable um, housing, something that every community <clears throat> says it needs, but we, we rarely see projects go forward that accommodate that. Anyway, what has spurred this is um, a newly elected trustee, uh, Joe Carlin, who has for years, you know, this has been something that he has uh, shown uh, concern for. Uh, he made a name for himself about six years ago when there was a proposal to build on NIAC's waterfront. It was called the TZ Vista Project. Later, it was renamed a couple of times, but for the purpose. It was was a proposed 128-unit condo, and um, and this had energized a group of of people in NIAC who were deadly opposed to that project and um, probably to to this sort of multifamily housing throughout the village in general. So at a recent village board um, <coughs> workshop meeting, Joe Carlin uh, had asked for a moratorium on building, particularly at the at the um, that end of, of the village at, uh, up along Main Street. This is where 59, you know, turn, after Route 9W turns into Main Street, the top of Main Street. And he had um, proposed; uh, it had been proposed that, that they put a moratorium on building. And while that was not um, uh, palatable to the rest of the board, um, there was discussion to analyze both the waterfront zoning, uh, I'll come back to that in a moment, and the ongoing development on Upper Main. Um, There are no pending projects, as far as I know right now, or no substantial projects on Upper Main, 
Um, but I think that, um, you know, Joe Carlin, whereas he's gone from activist to trustee, you know, now has, is hoping, I, I suppose, to have more clout in being able to go back and look at the codes and uh, re-examine, you know, the densities of the building and um, how far they are from the curb and uh, the heights and, and, and these sort of things. So mm -hmm. uh, this will be, I think, an interesting thing to, to uh, watch and to gauge um, because, you know, it's, it's a difficult situation. Uh, the housing crisis is something we all talk about all the time. It's, it's, it's well acknowledged. Um, it's particularly the millennial and the empty nester housing. There's such a dire need for housing above and beyond the, um, you know, single family home here, here in, in, in the county. Um, you know, for, for NIAC to, continue to thrive, I mean, you need younger people to be able to live there, you need a workforce, you need people who are downsizing out of houses if you want them to stay in the community, if they're, you know, long, loyal customers of shops and restaurants, but they feel that they have to leave because they, they, they can't afford to downsize, um, you, you know, th this raises some questions. Um, I guess on the other hand, um, there are people in NIAC who... Um, have an issue with the aesthetics of how the Upper Main has been developed, and I think just the sheer new numbers um, that have come to town. Although uh, I think the, the common wisdom is, is that when you when you have a village um, and and you've got um, many empty retail spaces and you've got restaurants, uh, kind of the more the merrier uh, in, in order to be able to support all, all the economy there. Um, and then just to go back for a second to the waterfront, so that that piece of waterfront is, is about four acres, and that was supposed to be developed by Bill Helmer and um, a local architect. And that was a very contentious project, and the, 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 the yelling and screaming about that went on for a long time. Ultimately, it was rezoned uh, through a text amendment. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, Joe Carlin, this, the trustee Carlin, is, again, he's asking for uh, this amendment to, to, I guess, basically be, be scrapped and to wind back to uh, what the zoning on the waterfront originally was. The developer and um, ne never ended up developing the site. He and his partner have been tied up in legal wrangling for years. Um, it's really a shame, uh, I think, that that uh, piece of land has sat empty, well, for decades, but it, there was, you know, a promise of, of, a, of, a, of a, a, a development that would have brought, um, you know, a, a lot of people to the village and, again, supported the business community. So um, a lot to watch there as NIAC, um, you know, reaches this kind of um, uh, juncture uh, where it is asking itself, what does it want to be going forward? And... Um, I think that we're going to see those questions play out, and we'll see if there are tweaks in the zoning code, um, and we'll also see what that implications that's going to have for future housing um, in, in the village. Mm -hmm. So if there are no questions, any questions, any thoughts? I, I'd only be able to ask you where you think it's going to go, but I, I mean, after such a complicated history of attempting to get some of these developments underway. It's it's so hard to predict what will get through and what won't. So I wouldn't even dare. I I, I agree with that. Um I you know, I guess I guess, you know, I guess I guess what 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 is always a true statement, no matter where, is that um it often depends on what the political will of a place is at any given time. Um I think that through the last couple of administrations, um, you know, there was the, um, I guess, the political will to to move forward to develop the waterfront um, with that text amendment being um, adopted. I, I think that, um, you know, that Upper Main Street, there's there's really no choice but for, for it to be redeveloped. It's just, it's, it's too um, degraded uh, for it to be, you know, it's ripe for redevelopment. Um, you know, er, uh, NIAC is one of the more urban um, 
centers of, of the county. And you've probably heard the phrase um, urban infill. Um, it makes sense to develop, I think, where there already is development rather than continuing to raise uh, large swaths of land and, and, and you know, take away much needed um, forestry and trees. Look at the flooding that we're dealing with. I mean, it just seems like we're in a new climate. And every, <clears throat> every time it rains, it doesn't just rain. Every time it rains, it's an event. So we, we should be thinking about development carefully. Um, um, I don't know. We're going to have to see what the politi- where, which way the political winds blow. In, that's really what it boils down to. Indeed we shall. I know you opened it up to questions from us, but I didn't know if you wanted to take a caller. We did have one with a question for you. I didn't yeah, know. I'll do my best to answer. Okay, we've got Gracie on the line with a question for you. Gracie, you're on with Tina Traster. Hi, good morning, Tina. Listen, I have a question. Um, I, uh, what, what is, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the word they use? Affordable. Affordable. How much would affordable be? Uh, the the salary it's just, uh, not the salary the rent so to speak yeah you know you know what what me what is this maybe something affordable for me is it affordable for you or to, or the next person that's my one thought when we have all when we have all these discussions we just throw out words with nothing specific now and also I like to know who the the builder is for all of these function of uh, projects that are going around because that will really tell us tell us a little bit about the lay of the land you know what i mean tina well well, okay the affordable housing program um is to be it's applicants who earn up to 60 percent of the annual medium median income uh which is currently set at thirty-eight thousand uh per year uh, for individuals and about 55 for a family of four Okay, wait. So it would be sixty. It would be uh, you know three fifths of that fifty amount for a family of four. Right. Okay. Right. And then in terms of who the developers are, I mean, easy enough for you to for you to figure that out. Um, you can simply call any town or village and uh, call the building department, call the plan, uh, call the the clerk. And just simply ask, um, who is the developer of, of that particular project? Okay, thank you. Because, you know, uh, that that has a lot to, to um, do with things, uh, what what the prop- property is going to be used for. And, and, and to be honest here in Rockland, I'm a senior citizen. We have 48 years. We have a big house. We don't need such a big house. But it's still cheaper to keep the big house. And, and hire somebody to mow and snow than to uh, move out. So uh, I, I hear you on that. I hear you and I feel you. I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I really do. It's um, I, I, not that far behind you. I, 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 you're right. You're 100% right. It, what, what is the next move and where is that, where, where is that move possible? It becomes, unless you want to pick up and go down to the Carolinas or, or, Florida, wherever. If you want to stay in the community that, that you love, where you have, you know, friends and history and whatever, um, it's a challenge. Right. That's uh, definitely, definitely. My husband won't go to Florida. It's too hot. And on that note, thank you very much, Tina. Okay, Gracie. Have a good one. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. And that was Gracie. All right. From our from, from our listenership, we always appreciate when she calls. Yes, yes, no. She makes a, a, ve- a very good point, um, and and one that's that's relatable. Mm-hmm. If if you've got a house and you're locked into a mortgage right now, um, or if you've got your mortgage paid, you know, paid down, but you want to move, and even though your house is is worth quite a lot, but you want to stay in in the area, where are you going to go? What's affordable? How much is built? What's available? It's 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 a real um, conundrum for sure. Mm-hmm. A very interesting question indeed, Tina. And thank you so much for bringing the issue to the attention of our listenership. We do appreciate it. If anybody else out there right now wants any more information on the Rockland County Business Journal, you could, of course, find their website, RCBiz, that's B-I-Z, RCBiz Journal. 
rcbizjournal.com, rcbizjournal.com, or you can visit their Facebook page, their Twitter. They've got all the social medias, and any chance to bring the information to you is much appreciated, and we enjoy your segment each and every week here on The Morning Show. Tina, once again, thank you so much. Have a great week, and we will speak to you next Monday. Have a great week.